here's a fact. Cod eat capelin. It's a pretty known fact. That's the main predator of capelin, whether it's on the east coast of North America, especially in the northeast coast, or if it's off the coast of Norway in the Atlantic. Cod eat capelin. But just imagine how much. Because today, we're going to be talking about one of the biggest predation events ever witnessed. It was back in 2014, so almost 10 years ago, where 10 million capelin were eaten by 2 million cod. Imagine witnessing that. Imagine seeing that for the first time and really thinking about how does this happen on a regular? How does this happen where it sustains the population? Well, I'm going to tell you how, and I'm going to tell you that the entire population of Capelin in that ball during that event was 23 million. So just under 50% were eaten. But does this happen often somewhere else? And what's going to happen with climate change? How is this going to be affected? And is this a problem for Capelin in the future? We're going to be talking about that all in today's episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. Let's start the show. Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Lewin, and this is the podcast where you find out what's happening with the ocean, how you can speak up for the ocean, and what you can do to live for a better ocean by taking action. If you're here now listening to this podcast, or you've listened to it any any number of times, or if this is your first episode, this is the resource to find out everything that's happening with ocean conservation and ocean science around the world this is the place you are in the right place you can find more information on what's happening around the world of in ocean conservation by going to speakupforblue.com that's speakupforblue.com and if you want to find out how to get information to your inbox Monday to Friday, so having three news articles, the latest podcast, the latest videos that we put out, as well as the latest job posts that we find on the internet, you can sign up for free by going to speakupforblue.com forward slash newsletter. That's speakupforblue.com forward slash newsletter. Let's get into the show, the ocean's largest predation event ever recorded by oceanographers. And it wasn't by a whale. It wasn't by a shark. It was by cod. It was by Atlantic cod eating their main prey diet, capelin. And in this study that was just published recently, oceanographers from MIT and Norway published a study after observing a staggeringly large predation event. So in 2014 in the Barents Sea off the coast of Norway, Over 10 million fish were eaten in just a few hours. So how in the world does that happen? Well, it happens during, maybe just after Capelin's sort of spawning event. So essentially what happens is the Capelin come in and they start swimming on their own. They're just chilling. They're swimming on their own. And after a while, they start to dive deep. And they dive deep. And as they dive deep, they get closer and closer together. And then more get closer and closer together until they form... Probably the largest bait ball you've ever seen. Now, capelin are used for a number of different things. They are used for uh, fish bait. They're used for as fertilizer. They're used as food, uh, as a food source for select communities. Um, And so they're, you know, they're they're used quite a bit, but they do tend to have these bait balls. And a lot of times you'll see it. They're very like anchovy-like fish. So they're very small. They're probably about this big. Uh, they're Arctic fish. They're they're normally in the North Atlantic or or in the here in the Barents Sea, and they like the cold water. They like to dive deep. They like to be in a bait ball. Why do they go in this bait ball? Is to protect themselves. So the fish in the middle will be protected from predators from the outside, and the fish on the outside are a bit altruistic, meaning that they're probably going to get eaten. There's a good chance they're probably going to get affected, damaged you know, hurt in some sort of way or just eaten in general because they're on the outside of this massive bait ball. Now, when I say massive, I'm talking about 10 kilometers long. That's how big, that's how much, like 23 million fish in one area, 10 kilometers long. That's how many there were. And 10 million of those were eaten by approximately 2 million codfish. Now, you're probably wondering, how do you count? all of those, Andrew. Like, that doesn't make sense. You don't just have someone, you're just counting all the fish. No, this was done by a specific uh, instrument that's called the Ocean Acoustic Waveguide Remote Sensing System. So the OAWRS. I don't know if it's called ORS or what have you. Scientists, we love 
are acronyms, right? Um, and, but it was recorded a decade ago during an exploratory trip where a team of scientists were used this sonic Im imaging technique uh, known as the acoustic waveguide uh, remote sensing system. This acoustic array attached to the bottom of the vessel where it sends sounds, sound waves in all directions. Those waves are bounced off anything and everything in their path. So if there's fish in the way or there's anything, it bounces off. Now, each, like another set of acoustic uh, receivers picks up the, the reflected sounds, giving the viewer an idea of what's happening for miles around. So it's on a screen. It's almost like how they do uh, seismic surveys. When they send a, a, an acoustic sound to the bottom of the ocean, it bounces up. And depending on how it hits and how it reflects back, you get to see these pockets of sort of like hydrocarbon pockets, right? Where you want to see oil and gas. In this case, you're seeing fish. Now, how do we tell between different species of fish? Well, it just happens, so happens that cod have swim bladders. The swim bladders allow them to float in, in the water column. So they're not always sinking like a lot of these sharks, but you have these swim bladders. Cod have bigger swim bladders than the uh, capelin. So when a cod has a low resonance, right, like a big bend bell, uh, whereas capelin have tiny swim bladders, so the resonance tends to be a high-pitched notes like piano. So you get the difference in the pitches as they come back, and the computer is able to decipher between those pitches. And if you just do a little bit of programming, these are MIT people here. Uh, I'm not sure what background the uh, people in Norway have, but the MIT people have this coding experience and they're able to decipher between and show how big these bait balls are how big the population of each of these different species are so that was kind of cool so um the mit paper goes on and I'll, I'll i'll link to the article in the show notes but the mit paper goes on to explain that the data was collected during a, the very heat of capelin's uh, spawning season so as the array pinged off off them in the early morning hours they were seen to be moving mostly as individuals along the coast of Norway. As they, the day progressed, however, they swam deeper, perhaps in an effort to avoid the light of the rising sun, so they're not seen by anything. The t and this is a quote uh, from, I don't know who, but one of the people. Um, it says, the team observed that as the capelin descended, they began shifting from an individual from individual to group behavior, individually forming a huge shoal of about 23 million fish that moved in a coordinated wave spanning over 10 kilometers long. That is huge. I've, I would love to see a, a, like sort of like a bait ball that much or, you know, that, that much of a, of a shoal to, of, of fish because that's just cool. A shoal fish is essentially a school of fish, but just in a, in a large area and very compact. Um, and, and soon the massive shoal began swimming as one, a behavior seen in other fish and uh, some flocks of birds. And the cod, so just imagine bird, a flock of birds just as they, sw as they switch directions, they all switch directions. And the cod in, in the area responded, forming a shoal of their own of over 2 million strong. The cod began to systematically attacking. Uh, Macris, who was one of the, the, study, the um, scientists on the study, it's the first time, see, he says, it's the first time seeing predatory prey interaction on a huge scale and it's a coherent uh, battle of survival. So this is happening over a monster scale, monster scale and we're watching a wave of capelin zoom in, like a wave around a sports stadium and they kind of gather together to form a defense. It's, almost, it's also happening with predators coming together to coherently attack. This is unprecedented. We've never really had the chance to observe such a large-scale predatory event like this. We've seen bait balls before, never in the 10 millions that we've seen. So this is great to be able to have this data in. Now, what we worry about in the long run is how these bait balls are going to be affected by climate change. We know fish spawning. We know currents changing, climate change it all gets affected with climate change, right? So heating of the oceans, switching of currents and wind patterns in the, in the ocean and in the atmosphere can really change how things are done, you know, and how things work and function within the ocean. You know, it's these small fish, when they're larvae, they get taken by the currents to another place. And that, that pattern is dependent on, dependent on by predators and prey itself to run their regular life cycle as those change during climate change or throughout climate change 
this will change the pattern and it may affect whether short term or long term whether it's going to be Capelin's success in reproduction or the cod success in predation predating these 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 fish these the, this prey right this cape these capelins so it could be a problem when we see these massive bait balls as you know the team said the study team said it's like once we get the last bait ball and we know it's the last population and we know it's going to be a mass you know feeding and predation population event once they're gone they're gone if they don't recover fast enough to take on you know 10 million or however many get get eaten at, a, at that one time that bait ball that population will not recover in time it is dependent on numbers it's a numbers game so if those numbers aren't successful in 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 having 10 million more offspring or more of that or less if it's less then we know that the cod population is going to go down so that's you know these and other predators other predators that depend on capelin as well it's all going to be affected it's all in a food web and it's all negatively responding or positively responding depending on how much reproduction we see on a daily basis on a year, annual basis semi-annual basis you know every couple of years this is is the problem with climate change this is the problem with any kind of environmental disturbance that we see is will we have more capelin to be able to witness these massive feeding events i don't know i haven't read the full study yet i don't know if um there have been other events after that that are that it shows a pattern of these massive 10 million uh, f- this this 10 million feeding event but that's pretty cool that's pretty cool to see it and be able to recover after that. So hopefully we'll see more recovery. Um, I know in certain places like off the coast of Canada, Capelin are uh, in a critical point as well as cod is just over a critical point, but like slightly. And, you know, there's been an increase in fishing for cod, uh, Atlantic cod off the Atlantic coast of Canada. And so there's an opening of that. That could be dangerous as well. So these, these fish populations are not, you know they're, they're not unlimited there there is a limit to each one they can go down in population depending on what happens climate change is rearing its ugly head faster and faster than we've ever seen so we don't know how this is going to affect this fish population i'll try and get more information and maybe try and get an interview to talk about the the the, the capelin cod predation prey relationship on that side of the atlantic and be able to bring that back to you but I thought it was an interesting uh, story. I wanted to bring it to you because I think it's something that we should share together. Uh, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Do you, have you ever heard of this before? Um, have you ever seen any more studies? Who's working on this? I would love to hear and, and what you think of, the, of the, the content of the topic of this 10 million strong bait ball, 23 million bait ball, but 10 million being consumed in less than a few hours. I think that's amazing. I want to hear your thoughts. You can hit me up on a comment on Spotify, on YouTube, or you can hit me up on Instagram at how to protect the ocean. Just send me a DM. That's at how to protect the ocean. I would love to hear your thoughts on the podcast, this thoughts on this episode, and just your thoughts in general relating to ocean conservation and science. So feel free to contact me, ask me any kind of questions. I'd be more than happy to answer it either here or to you directly. I want to thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the How to Protect the Ocean podcast. Have a great day. We'll talk to you next time, and happy conservation.